Okay, hello, uh, I, we are live. So, um, hopefully gonna get through six games tonight. Uh, welcome everybody, I think there's a few of you online. And we're gonna start with Valley tonight, work on through End Light, and then I've forgotten the order completely already after that point. Um, so, I wanted to show actually Edith Finch, but it's the kind of thing which you can't actually, um, you know, if you show too much of it, you spot it. Well, if you show anything more than about two minutes, you spot it. So um, that was basically off. Uh, I am going to brave a little bit of Subnautica. I'm not going to reveal anything that, well, as little as possible about that. Um, it just gives you an opportunity to just chat about it a little bit, and I will avoid anything in the vicinity of spoilers. Um, so as I try to move my head to, to be roughly in the middle of the camera, which doesn't doesn't feel like it, but never mind. Uh, we'll get straight on to Valley. Okay, so on to the game. It shall appear in one moment, I am told. There we go. Right, so what is Valley? Valley is a first person something. It is actually a first person mess. Um, but <laughs> and Greg's just jumped in saying it's alright the Subnautica trailer spoiled everything I know Greg but the thing is about the Subnautica trailer is that when you actually play the game you forget everything you saw on the trailer so it's alright that's what happened to me so uh, this is a first person this is a first person uh, mashup of every first person game you've ever played and I just kind of like it maybe I should have started the level already so I played through the whole thing um, and it starts out as sort of like, oh, it's kind of like an exploring game, you just wander around, and then it turns into Mirror's Edge, and then later on it's a bit of a first-person shooter, and next it's a Spider-Man game. So I'm just jumping into the middle of the game here. We're not going to get any, like, um, dialogues or things to find, because I've done everything. So, you know, you just get exploring around this valley, oh, looking for something called the Life Pod. <laughs> the Sussurus. What, Greg? I, I actually don't know what the word susurrus means, unless it just sounds cool to you. Right. So, yeah, you've got these, uh, you put these rusty leg things on. Um, because, as you do, and um, find yourself getting this uh, ability to run far and jump a lot. So, there's these little orbs of energy you can pick up. You can see I have an energy bar right at the top of the screen there. So I get another one of those. Thank you very much. And um, I can actually rip life from anything I want to. So, um, oh dear, I've killed the tree. Um, to be honest, I didn't really enjoy doing that. Uh, I, I think I hardly ever did that. So I can give the life back to the tree. And that's much more, feels much, much better. Now, it, it's all right. It looks kind of nice, this game. But, you know, some of the, when I saw these vines, I thought, ooh, look, paper. <laughs> so, um, but generally it's all right. Um, now there's these little tiny things hovering about, which pretty much do nothing. I tend to think of them as Bali's equivalent of Ewoks. Um, if you ever get one in front of you, they just tend to smile a lot and look cute. Yeah, hi there. Yeah, but of course I can drag energy out of them too, if I really wanted to be mean about it. Um, and they just look sad and grey. Of course, I'm going to give the... Oh, take the energy back, please. Yes, there you go. Normal guy. Right. So, anyway. The great thing, um, after it's early, just wandering around the arrester phase, is that it becomes this kind of open, jumping experience where you're just like, it's just fun to run around. And I just sort of liked it for that. So... I'm just running and running and running. And I actually did this a lot. I just did not go bother exploring so much, you know, looking at everything around me. I just tend to just run straight through. I think I missed a lot of, like, little excavation site. I missed a lot of little things um, that were waiting for me everywhere. So... Let's have a look here. So there's a giant tree. And there's all sorts of things usually dotted around. There's some um, uh, little notes to read. And there are actually some 
Bioshock style audio logs. I say Bioshock style, but we're talking about Prey or System Shock or anything like that. And you just come here and I just, all I wanted to do was just run. And that's pretty much all I did for, for a little while. And I didn't check, I didn't comb every tiny space in this valley. I just went running. And for me, it was kind of like the price that was that was worth the price of admission running along these giant tree barks doing double jumps in the air and sometimes you do get the the music changing oh look is that a rabbit I'm sure i saw a rabbit um and the thing is uh, all the you see rabbits and deer but to be honest they don't really have much much use uh, if, if use, that's a terrible thing to say. That's a typical player. They don't have much function in the game. You can take life from them and kill them. Uh, and you can give the life back to them. But um, generally, um, you know, it, 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 it's all kind of like just um, background for you to enjoy. Now, the one thing you can't do, you cannot fall into water. If you fall into water, that's it. Your legs are too heavy. And... Yes. So the valley apparently can bring you back to life through some weird thing I'm not going to try and explain. Um, but the valley loses its health as well. You can see the little green leaves up in the top left. Um, and that's the valley's health. And I can actually restore the valley's health by giving energy back to dead trees and things like that. If I can find anything. So let's get out of here. Oh, there's a dead tree. There we go, tree back to life. Now that is actually, it is strangely satisfying returning life to all the trees and things like that. And I was wondering how this game was actually going to keep on, you know, giving. Oh, here we go. You know, um, after this, what it was, it was I guess going to go around and pick up logs and things like that. Um, I mean, like audio logs, story. Um, well, no, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't stay like this forever. Uh, of course, the, eventually you, you're going to have to go up this uh, lift structure later on. And just to give you an impression of where it goes, let's change to another section. Um, Titan Rock, let's go to Titan Rock, that's the next bit up, so we go up to the top of the rock here. Um, it's not a truly 100% satisfying game. Uh, it changes so much and it, it doesn't, apart from the running around and sort of mirror's edginess of it, if I would put it that way, um, some of the stuff later just, um, it's substandard. You know, like the first person shooter is not that really exciting. Um, you may be wondering why I've got a hat on, but that's because it's snowing in, in Britain and uh, it's obviously cold. I am sitting beside a radiator. Uh, yes, of course, we're in an elevator and what has to happen? The elevator has to have an accident. Oh my god. But only a little bit of an accident. What do you do now? And um, every, you know, level designer's friend, the fog, to make sure they don't have to show anything in the distance. So, let me show you the next kind of uh, activity you get involved in. Just to show you how it changes. So there's a yeah, see, there's some notes there. There you go. Blah, blah, blah. That's, hello, little guys. That's right. Me, me, me. That's all you say all the time. And jump. Yes. It becomes a jumping game. Yeah, never mind about those things. Yep. And of course, if you fall down here, you are like, you're like dead. However, it's not actually that difficult. I, I found the jumping, even though we all hate jumping puzzles, the platforms are usually quite wide and spacious. Uh, it moves lazily in a sort of um, N++ sort of way, so you can really aim for uh, where you're gonna land on. And so, it's not, <sighs> yes, I would have to do that. Never mind. So, generally I didn't die from falling a lot of the time. Um, but eventually you end up like inside tunnels. <laughs> um, 
you end up in a lot of tunnels and it's a lot, a lot of it's underground and so it becomes very claustrophobic this open lovely game you could run around jump you know feel very free and then it becomes follow the corridor follow the corridor follow the corridor open the door and you know what it's just not it's just an ordinary game here's another section which is kind of fun where you it's kind of silly you just run a lot but it feels kind of good and I, I can do this let's just run along the metal tracks which will speed me up and jump that's right and I can jump it reminds me of something like Platonica where you know there's a lot of joy in just running um, you know cross tracks from place to place uh, this is actually a kind of a fun bit, but um, when I say in terms of um, how, you know, um, tunnelly it gets, there's a lot of just like walking around dark underground corridors and all bases. It becomes very bio-shocky, to be perfectly honest, that kind of thing where it's scientific experiments gone crazy. And... Actually, Greg, you, you look, love, look, the, love the look of this. The first time you do it, they gives you this like lovely piece of music where you're like oh my god I'm running through a tunnel it's great let's let's be free I'm gonna take my clothes off and go mad right and of course metal feet you know I can I can walk on walls obviously as a, this game will do anything you know and everything it'll just check everything into the pot right okay I'm gonna kind of stop around here so we get to the valley, you can see, ooh, it's gone out, disappeared, the lighting's, ooh, you can just about see, uh, there's a, some building in the distance, and that's the um, place we're aiming for. It's all a bit Bioshocky and saving nature from evil science and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, it, don't really play it for the story, just play it for the fun running around, it, it gets a bit boring at times. I didn't find it very difficult to be honest. Um, and there is a bit of Spider-Man later on which I was hoping to show you but it would take another five minutes to get there where you start like um, shooting chains out to go th climb for a forest. But come on let's just fix some trees. That's obviously the best thing about the game other than the jumping. So there you go Valley. It's a bit of a weird mess. Um, but I kind of enjoyed my time with it, even though towards the end you, want, you just want it to, you just want to be done with it. But um, it's not particularly difficult. You know, it reminds me of some of the old um, indie games, um, uh, not the indie games, like uh, mods uh, you would get for Half Life and things like that. But just done up to a um, you know really good standard. So I think it is time to move on to. End light. So, let's see, this comes up nicely. End light. So, let's have a look here. End light. I first came across this in the Eurogame Expo, the Indie Games Arcade in 2013. And it was a kind of game where it's like racing through tunnels or something like that, and I was very bad at it. And just thought, well, it looks nice. I'll just keep tabs on that, and it's even featured in one of my videos very briefly. Um, now, the thing is, then you never heard from it ever again. Uh, there is a site for it, and the site is kind of empty. It's got a few pictures on it. Um, and I just signed up for mailing lists, and then nothing happened for many years. <laughs> I think it was, was it last year, 2017, maybe 2016 even, that Jim McGinley, who is who represents Big Pants, uh, who uh, who makes uh, who is making Endlight, said, "Oh, uh, there's a build if you want it. You know, download and tell me what you think." And I was like, "All right then." And the thing is, initially, I hated it. So, oh, I better switch to uh, my end light mode because I can't change the, the volume and the volume of this uh, gets a bit loud. So, right, hopefully that'll be better. Wow. Get 10 hoops, that's all you gotta do. 
Right, so this is the kind of thing where you look at it and go, what? It's, what is going on? So I am this little um, thing you can see in the middle of the screen. Um, and I've just got to pick up 10 hoops. Um, and the game shakes and smashes into things so much. <laughs> yes. You're like, what the hell is going on? And... Yes. And... And it sounds all very menacing. But the thing is, uh, then I was trying to get the hoops and I was like, oh, it's... I can't get the hoops. It's like struggling. I'm struggling. I can't get them. And I would just die all the time. But the thing is, I persisted. And what I found was, the way this game works, the camera is on a, on a course. You have to follow this course that the camera is laid out for you. And if you deviate too much from it, you're actually struggling, you're pushing against the camera, and that will kill you because you just really, you know, you, you can't really, you, you lose control, it becomes too sticky. Let's get uh, some hoops there. I thought you had plenty of time. Remember, I to invert. I'm not going to do that. And when I discovered that the camera was leading me and I had to just go with it, it becomes this sort of zen experience where you're like, oh, I shouldn't struggle. If I struggle, then I'm... I'm just... I'm going to die. Now, to be fair... Wow, 13 hoops, that's pretty good. I know, I know what you're thinking. This is madness. But I... It's awfully pretty to look at. It's got such a feeling of grand scale and just like... It's very a simple idea, getting these hoops and stuff, but... It makes you feel like you're... When you get through the levels, it makes you feel like you've done something of an accomplishment because it looks so mad and chaotic even though a lot of these devils are actually pretty pretty simple. Now this is of course still in test phase. I mean I saw it in 2013 and um, you know it's still not ready for prime time. Um, still being developed. Yeah yeah yeah. I've got eight shields. If you get down to zero you will die. Oh my goodness. Down to three now. Right, let's get some more hoops. How many do you need? Two more. Ha! Huh. That's what I'm talking about. One. There we go. And, actually, if you get ten shields, you get a shield every time you pick up a hoop. If you get ten shields, oh, it just accelerates. It goes like, oh, obviously you're too good at it. Let's just make it faster. You have to give the levels a, 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 a moment to form so you know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know why it speeded up there. I only got five shields. Yeah. There's actually a little thing in here. So, wow. And then you have this. You think, oh my god. Oh my god, I'm going to die. Right. Yes. Um... There is a thing where if you hit lots of um, blocks or walls all at the same time, then actually you get this like weird super effect where like all the blocks just explode. You know, they explode away from you. You do have to start thinking ahead though. Like the way something like Boson X makes you, um, you know, or, or Super Hexen, you have to be thinking ahead and sometimes you have to be thinking where you need to be to get the next hoop. And these are actually easy levels. Later on it gets kind of crazy. Uh, you see some of the Metropolis levels, which we're probably not going to see today. Here we go, dots. And the look of all the levels, uh, they do feel very different. So yeah, this is a game I initially thought, oh my god, it shakes too much, I can't see anything, and I die all the time. Who would play this game? 
and um, and then I just got it. And I just love the sort of anarchy of it. Of it's just it's it's just kind of mad, but it's it's a sort of madness you can tame. Except when you get to the Metropolis levels, and then you can really die quite a few times playing those ones. In the Metropolis levels, you have this like entire like random, it looks random like um, cross sections of city just cutting across you at random, and the hoops are in the middle of them. You cannot um, ignore the, you cannot like just stay outside. In fact, this game doesn't like you going too far away from the middle of the playfield or the tunnel or whatever you're doing. If you go too far out, it will tell you off and say you're going outside and will actually kill you. That is some part of the game which I think can be a bit tricky. I haven't had of an issue with it playing this new build so much, but sometimes you're not quite sure what is outside and what is considered to be inside. And then it just starts going red and thinking, where do I go? Where do I go? That's the end of the first five episodes. And this new build, which I got just last couple of weeks ago, has something different in it. Um, it gives you these kind of chill out levels. The original game that I played, original version I played, it just keeps on going and keeps on going, you know, level after level after level. And now it's basically free running. Just go and find five hoops. Just enjoy the space. Instead of like constantly, you know, um, you know, driving you to some sort of terrible, you know, you're going to have a heart attack if this keeps on going. It actually decides, you know, you need a break. So the music starts playing once you've got a hoop. And if you get a few more hoops, then just get four more hoops and then... The level's, uh, level's done. Now actually, you can see... You can actually see the game creating the level, which is not something you see when you're playing it normally. But here you can see, of course, I've just filled the screen with stuff. You can see it actually appearing before your very eyes. Of course, if you go to the other end, you can see it um, slowly dismantling as well. Okay, one more hoop. All right. Thank you very much. So, I think Jim thinks um, Endlight has a problem that people are not going to play it um, after they've played, say, you know, five or ten levels. They'll be like, "I'm done with this." Um, I don't know. May have a point about that. It's it's a, it's a. I feel like it's a gorgeous game. Um, yeah, so, uh, this is supposed to be a level, I think, where you have some messages come at you, but, um, I had them turn up once, I haven't had them turn up again. Let's just finish this level quickly and get into the next. There's plenty of hoops coming our way. So, I'll just do another couple of levels, and then I think that's enough end light for this show. One thing I should be mentioning about it. The game I initially hated, but then loved. There we go. Let's crash through lots of blocks. Talk more later. So I think this is... Um, um, I just want to tell you... That, oh, wow. Yeah, Coil really screws me up. Um, wow. <laughs> um... I think this is a perfect example of why you should sign up to developers mailing lists because if I hadn't signed up to the mailing list I would not be here right now playing this game. Um, I have no idea, wow I can't see a thing, <laughs> I, I actually do die in coil a few times. Um, right, now I'm going to start aiming, smashing is good, let's go through this sign. Right, let's get a, oh. <laughs> I was out. I was out. I've already complained about the pathetic note. You're going to have that taken out. I'm not the only person to say that. Ah, welcome, Sean. It is something weird. 
So let me just get through this level of coil. Uh, pick up the ten hoops. One, two. Right, let's see where we're at. Seven shields, not too bad, not too bad. Let's get another one over here. Right, uh, let's go and get another one. Coil used to be so much easier than this. I remember Coil was, was always a bit mad, but you could always get through it. Cow is a void, I have no idea what that means. Whether that's actually increasing the difficulty level because I did that, I don't know. Come on, I can I can chain them through here. Come on, get a few more. Oh, got it. There we go. So let's just do this last one. Pillars one. So this is more of a what you'd say. This is what I expected more from End Light. This is more of a level. This is what I saw uh, in the Eurogamer Expo. In, 2013 and I expected to see a lot more kind of like tunnels and you know of course you can go outside I'll do that let me just go outside and you can see see the grandness of it but and if you do that it will kill you pretty quickly and say look get back inside you idiot so you 10 7 well I feel like I made a mistake I always feel like that when I see a thing outside. Come on, where are the hoops? <laughs> There's one. Come on. One more. Right. So there you go. That is Endlight. Still in development. You can't buy it, but uh, I'm hoping. I might have interested some of you into maybe getting interest uh, interest some of you into getting interested in it. My God, my English is rubbish tonight. Right, so we'll call it a day on end light as I struggle to shut shut down the program. Alt F4, stream is best friend. Uh, Sean says this is Kerfil and the best leveling child of Eden at a horrible, beautiful baby. Well, I got the Kurthil reference. I'm not sure about uh, Child of Eden because that is something I've not played. Right, so what I'm going to do now is move on to old school. Um, so this is something that's people usually shorten to the Majesty of Colours, but it is actually I fell in love with the Majesty of Colours. Usually there's brackets around the I, I fell in love with. And this is a really old game. Um, Let's see, when was it? It came out in uh, 2008. Um, and it was one of those early games where, oh, oh Greg, Gregory Averywhere is, we're, we're, okay, I'll just say Gregory, um, is on the chat, the, uh, one of the two developers. No, well, Gregory was the original developer of the original in 2008, which was a Flash game. And here we are 10 years later and it's been remastered um, and uh, it's not just Gregory now, it's Gregory and Melissa everywhere who worked on this game. And it was released just yesterday. Now, the interesting thing is, why is this here? Why does this exist? I think at the end of the day, it's sort of more of a reminder um, because Flash games are dying. Flash is dying. Um, no one's updating Flash anymore. Browsers are now saying, don't open this up. It may destroy your PC or steal it. And um, so anything that's in Flash is getting increasingly harder to, to play or you're being actu actively discouraged. So those of you who don't know, let me just take you through uh, a little bit of gameplay of I Fell In Love With The Majesty Of Colours. Uh, shall I read it? Yes, last night I had a dream. It's mouse, <laughs> not, not controller. I floated in darkness, immense Squamous. Now that is a word I do not know. Squamous. It's always a, I have to look that one up. My mind flowed like my body, slowly and sinuously. Tremendous wheels, both too slow and too fast for me to describe to you now. I was perfect and titanic and serene, but then as I moved through the cold abyss, I saw a light. And as I came near, I saw something wonderful. Above me was an alien world. Strange orbs floated there, and there was something special about them, something I'd never seen before. 
Now let me just jump in here. There are two font options, uh, size options. Um, I was tempted to use the large font, you know, I thought it'd be better for streaming, but they are pretty large. The, the words go over half the screen. So if you don't need them, try to avoid bringing them because they do actually um, uh, block every, or block the majesty of colors. So if only I could get a close look, it's a little hint there. So turns out you're this little creature at the bottom. So you grab balloon and you see the color for the first time. I fell in love with the majesty of colors and you can let go of it. You grab another one. And it's, it's actually a really short game. It's, um, there are five different endings as it makes very clear on the, on the front level. And I think I read that um, Gregory was saying that they created this. It's not the same game you played, but it's the memory of the game you played. And I think that's probably true. That has a downside and upside. I don't know if, you, if you've played the original, I don't think you should come in saying, ooh, are there 10 more endings? Are there more things to, to grab? I mean, there are the birds. You can grab the birds. Can't, can't do anything, you know, can't eat them or anything, but you can grab the birds and play with them. Um, so it is pretty much what I remember, but I dare say if I bring up two copies beside each other, they would feel different. Um, so let me just grab a man. Oh, there's a person. What do I want to do with it? And it's this little tiny story, a short story with a bit of branching in it, where you are basically this unusual, this massive undersea creature, some sort of eldritch horror. I think it's Lovecraftian is the word it's used. And, I, and it's up to you what you do. You can't eat anything. That's not what this game is about. It's not about being, you know, the terrorizing monster. It's about being curious. And there's a lot of... I think it still holds up, even though it's a short game. Um, I think it's one of the early games. We all remembered it because it sort of put together some interesting mechanics with story without being really in your face. I mean, these are the days where you used to get something like one-on-one -on -one story, and I always use this as my perfect example. Okay, I always use this as my perfect example um, of um, uh, games which like just can't put their mechanics together with the story. So one-on-one -on -one story was something like, you know, it was a little platform, a puzzle platform, and it would say stuff like, oh, well, you know, um, my beloved was far away from me so I needed to cross the gap somehow to her um, and things like that and I was just ah oh, we had a lot of that and it still happens now I mean oh it's a dream game oh, I, I reached for the silvery orb knowing that it was my truth you know and things like that I'm like oh it's you're struggling to map meaning into what you're doing sometimes just don't bother give up but here it just you're actually, it, everything feels like um, it works together. So I can put the guy back on there and he goes off. And I, I don't know if you'd call it a, something about morality. Um, it's up to you what you make of it. Um, and obviously you're going to want to drill down through all the endings. Uh, I managed to find all a four out of five the other day in one sitting. Uh, in one sitting, but I wasn't able to find the fifth, and it's just a very subtle difference um, to get the fifth one. Um, so the question is, um, it's up for $2 right now, that's a discount. I think it's just going to go up a little bit more than that when it's off discount, so we're not talking about a huge amount of money. But the game you could probably get done very quickly. And I think it's more of, this game is here to keep the memory of it alive and keep the memory of those times alive when everybody's struggling to figure out, you know, let's make some cool indie games, let's make something different. And this is like one of the earliest art games which sort of it's caught the wind, he said, looking at the sails in the boat. And so if this game hadn't been remade, I wouldn't say it was going to be lost, but it would be hard to... Um, it. <laughs> You can't just throw it at somebody and say, have a go at this, this is, where, this is where things started. And I'm sure you can say there are games which have picked up on the same vibes, the same approaches since then. But 
um, you know, this game has been saved, at least, at least for now, until the next technological destruction occurs. Oh my god, Steam's gone. What are we going to do with all our Steam games? Uh, don't say that, Joel. So, lovely little touches like the eyes move as you move the mouse back and forth. And, of course, I can drag these balloons. Oh, sorry, fish. Right under the water, let them go. Bob around. So, yeah, I, if you remember the game really closely, um, you might think, well, what's the point in playing it? Because it is pretty much the same game. But if you want to, you know, say thank you to that game, because you didn't pay for it at the time. It was free on Congregate and places like that. Uh, this might be your chance to say, you know, thank you for helping to kick off, you know, all the art game stuff that happened over the years. Obviously, Gregory wasn't single-handedly created the art game movement. He's just one of many people. But these are one of the, um, this is one of the points, one of the um, milestones um, across the years. Tale of Tales was very important as well. Uh, I think there's another game which reminds, reminds everybody of this one uh, by Daniel... I can never pronounce the name, but it's from like Ben Murgi, and it was um, something about um, the moon, and that had a melt bindings as well. Um, if anybody remembers, type it straight into the chat, and I'll say it out loud, except for Daniel's name. Um, so I think that's all I want to say about um, the game. I mean, it seems a bit churlish to show you all five endings and go all the way through through it. I mean, there's a lot, there's a little bit more to do, and it's just kind of fun. I wish I were the moon. That's it. That's the one. I wish I were the moon. It's not to the moon. That's the, the one that makes everybody cry and is very sad and I still haven't played it. Um, but yeah. Um, so there you go. Uh, I suppose go art game history. Um, so we'll move on from there. Thank you, Greg, uh, for giving me uh, a key. So I'm going to try and make it clear in future when people give me keys. Because... Uh, uh, I, d I didn't pay for end light either, but I didn't get a key for that. Just send me a build. Okay. So what are we on to next? Well, I think it's time to look at Subnautica, and I will stress. Um, I'm not going to spoil things. Um, Today I die, Greg has just mentioned. That's right. Uh, thanks, thanks, Greg. Uh, it's my pleasure. Um, Greg, Gregory. I gotta say, I gotta be. Gregory is the guy who made the game. Greg is not the guy who made the game. It's going to get very confusing in the chat. So I'm going to have to change the name. Greg, you'll have to change your name to uh, Bob, short for Kate. Right, so let's open up Subnautica. Today I Die, that was another good one, yes. That was also by Daniel B. Um, that was more like a, kind of a, that was like a, a poem, wasn't it? <laughs> um, Unfortunately, this is the thing. This is a good reason why you shouldn't like quit and reload, go back to your last save, because it takes forever to load up. And I've got a fast PC. <laughs> I swear this has taken longer than the first time. Okay. Cutscene, everybody. I've seen this too many times now. NS2. It's that natural selection too, Greg, you say was uh, notorious for loading times. Should I say all this again about when something gets, yeah, right? When something's flying around, you know what's going to happen. I'm not going to do the in your face again now. In your face. So, right. So, what this is, is just uh, to get your bearings, like, you know, pick up the fire extinguisher and put the fire out. So you can skip all this. You can just jump straight into, like, you know, game proper if you skip the cutscene. Okay, let's put this out. Right, Tom Jubert behind the original Penumbra. And, um, uh, what else? Uh, the Taylor's Principle, he was a co-writer on that. And also, um, on Driver, The Swapper. And now on Subnautica. Now, I haven't played Subnautica until it finally came out of um, Early Access just last January, right? came out in January. Indeed. 
good luck. Now, what I um, really like, Subnautica is very cleverly hands off, but in a in interesting ways. I have actually spent a long time not making progress simply because I wasn't paying attention. I was just doing my thing. I did a complaint about how I realized I had to start looking for resources. But right, there's a ton of information, survival package blueprints, there's loads of stuff in here. And I just literally haven't, I, I, when I started, I thought, you've got to be kidding if I'm reading all that. And there's loads of information there. You're, you're kind of like, I'm sorry. There's loads of information there. And you just, you just avoid looking at it. And then later on you think, mm, I need to do things. You start looking back through all the information like, oh yeah, that's useful. So the way they get around telling you instructions half the time is by to give you too many instructions. And that, this ship becomes your major milestone. Although you can get, um, there's a sort of beacon on your escape pod, which you know you can see from wherever. This becomes a sort of very large visual signature for the game. So let me just go into the water. And it's just like the most beautiful tropical sea you've ever been to. You know, everything is like very, very blue. You can go up for the bottom of the escape pod is uh, there and you see things floating around. I am going to avoid, you know, triggering anything and getting too close. But the first thing that happened to me is I like looked down and thought, well, I don't mind, you know, this area. But once it starts getting a bit deep over there, I was thinking, you've got to be kidding me. That's looking a bit. Oxygen. Yeah. And then that happens. You've got enough oxygen, like for about, you know, two seconds of <laughs> Of exploration and that proves to be your first problem you know and you can't really go very far I had to think it stops you going down too far to be honest which is which is good because there's there's some stuff down there sometimes and you know what do you do you start wandering around you are you gonna go to the big ship and see like what's gonna go over there because obviously right it's this giant ship I'm going to leave the escape pod and go for the giant ship and find out what's happening there. And there you go. You see there's a beacon. There's a little blue symbol there showing you that if you know how far you go away, you can, you can see it. And it's just literally just really kind of gorgeous to look at. It's full of, you know, life and um, brightly colored plants. It's, it's, all, it's this kind of game where, you know, everything looks has been designed to look kind of supernaturally gorgeous um, and provide lots of visual feedback for you. I don't want to go into any detail of the game because, you know, this is the kind of game where you spend a lot of time just figuring out the systems, just enjoying the systems and finding out, you know, you've got down there, there's the oxygen in the bottom left there, there's also, we've got life, we've got our um, hunger and we've got um, hydration, you know, you've got a drink as well. And there are different modes. You don't have to play this proper survival mode. There's creative and there's also um, like a hardcore mode. I can't remember what that's called. Like when you got permadeath, one life. And there are other things as there's another mode as well, which I can't remember, like free roam or something like that. There's a there's slightly easier mode. And you know, <laughs> I just just like um I think, was it a couple of days ago? I was looking for something. I mean, the game had told me like, if you're interested, maybe you should go and check this thing out. So I did, I went looking for it. And I found something else by accident. Um, and I was just like, what? And it just changed the entire game. Literally, that was not the thing I was looking for. I ended up finding something else by accident and it's like, Oh, I got a lot to do now. So uh, I've been kind of busy with this other thing. And uh, it just made you realize how much depth there is in the game. Um, there's going to be quite a lot to do and to, to figure out. 
Um, I'm not going too far. If I stray too far, I'll start like attracting the attention of things. The game will start telling me things. I'm just trying to keep it keep it simple for you. Oh, oxygen again. So um, I it's this is this the best waves in the business? <laughs> I love these waves. Honestly, they just look pretty good. Um, if you look at them from a distance. Look at that, all the fish jumping. Uh, if you look at them from a distance, uh, you can see a sort of like a uh, sort of a tessellation, a pattern like you always do sometimes in these kind of games where everything is just a repeated pattern. But honestly, it's, um, they work really hard on giving it the effect of like keep being in, in, in the water. Greg loves the waves, we all love the waves. Um, so yeah, I think there's an enormous amount in this game. Everyone who's played it, who's, who's played more or less to conclusion, they've talked about 40 or 60 ways. Sea of Thieves had the best waves, okay. It sounds like maybe I should just play that just to see the waves. Come on, don't you just want to follow these things? But let's not. So, I mean, ah, here we go again. So yeah, this this will, that will that will drive your game at the beginning. That will drive your game at the beginning constantly getting the oxygen, um, and it will it will also make you a bit mad because you want to like I want to go down a bit deeper now. I'm feeling a bit more brave, but it's not just the depth that's that's frightening. But when you go further out, this feels remarkably safe and and warm, but when you start moving out. It's not the same. It just doesn't feel the same. The remarkable subtle changes the game puts puts in place to make you feel threatened, and I have to admit that 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 stuff is is pretty it's pretty clever. And I love the way the systems slowly come into the game, and you know it doesn't. You, know, you think what's that? And it doesn't. Um, it doesn't really overwhelm you. It does, but not in a way that says, you must go and do this. Yeah? Have you not got the XYZ thing I told you to get yet? N no. Um, it just leaves you be most of the time. It gives you a few interesting, you know, help notes, but um, you know, at the bottom as well. But yeah, so far, I guess I, I've, I've really enjoyed this. Um, and it is becoming more threatening the, the more I play of the game and I have to say that um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of content in here. Um, it's not disappointing. Um, and story-wise, I can't say that the story so far is like, f is like f absolutely fascinating or anything like that. Um, it's kind of usual kind of science fiction tropes, those sort of things, but just written really well at the moment. Uh, I don't know if we're going get, to get any more out of it. but. Um, absolutely fascinating. There's a lot out there, and you just know there's a lot, lot to be found. No, oh, eat something. Yes, I'm running out of, uh, running out of my 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 orange food food bar. And as you can see, there is a day and night cycle. And things do get kind of dark. And then you start to see the bioluminescence. And it's a different world when it gets dark and. It's not like Minecraft. You can't sleep, okay? So if you don't like the night, you're gonna have to just wait, like for about, I don't know how long it takes, five, 10 minutes or something. And um, yeah, you just like to look around and see. But you know, this when, when you start, Oxygen. when you start getting into danger, you know, that, that night becomes a little bit more worrying. So I'm just gonna leave it there. I just wanted to talk a little bit about how it made me feel and just show you basically how gorgeous it feels. Uh, and why is that flashing over there? Did you see that flashing? I saw some flashing. Hmm. This is an old, there, there's something flashing over there. <laughs> well, I'm gonna leave that. So um, that's, just all I wanted to show of Subnautica without what spoiling the, the game. Well, Trend let's just stop showing story, shall we? Right. 
Okay, let me quit that game. Yeah, let's quit that progress. Quit game, and we're gonna bring app induction now. So here we go. Induction. So this is um, Brian Gale's time travel game. Um, so I talked about these types of games, I call them playback puzzles, where you um, you go in and you end up having to, it's like you record your actions and you play them back to yourself. The Taylor's Principle did this really well, in, in the, they presented it like you do some actions, you record them, you play them back and the two of you, you and your ghost, um, can do something. And most games usually call this time travel where you can actually go back in time and play with your previous self. And that's what induction is all about, about like going back in time and trying to um, 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 work together with your old self to try and get through a level. So um, it's very minimalist and abstract. So it has a very weird level select. I had this right in the beginning. I actually got, this is a key I got from, from, from Brian and he gave me a copy, what, back in 2015 or something. Uh, Greg says hell is yourself. I suppose that's true, but in this game, you're not your own enemy and you can't get through these levels. Well, actually, Greg, I haven't finished it, so maybe you do become your own enemy. I don't know. Um, so it's it's practically no words, right? Apart from, you know, unless you're bringing up, you know, the menu and the side. So the first level, the just first few levels are just basic in instructions. You're a cube. You can't go up there. Got to go up these little steps to get to the only thing which appears to be another white cube. That's the level done. Then you move on. Okay, so you can move the barrel in it and it's like a switch. And cross the bridge. Again, just basic stuff. I have to say this funky level selector. Um, so when you go there, then it opens up into another layer, and then you go along there, and then you can go down, uh, or you can go across, and it's just like, what, what is going on? My head is already broken. Um, then you've got the next one, um, where you discover you can activate things yourself. So that's a switch activated by yourself. So quite, oh, it's quite straightforward. You want to get that barrel down there. Okay, I'm going to call it a barrel falls down and you see this is the first thing I want to point out what I'm slightly unhappy about because of the the abstract isometric nature of it isometric nature of it I miss dropping the barrel into that space there's no grid lines to guide you and so I just missed it someone's gonna say oh you can turn on the grid lines option in a second so I missed it because I I thought it was gonna fall in and every single time I just sort of miss it so getting positions is a bit, I find a little bit awkward at times. So you cross the bridge and still no time travel required yet until this one. So you go down here and then, oh, well, if I then move off there, then I can't get across. So I've got to sit there, but somehow get across. And then you course the game, I've already been through this, so the game has already told me, you can go back in time with the A button. So, I've gone back in time, my old self is there, and then I complete the level. Now, what's not clear at that point is that your old self, you mustn't interfere with your old self too much. You've got to be able to um, get through, your old self has to be able to exit where you exited. So you can't upset the timeline too much. And I haven't played a great deal because I, I <laughs> I'm not great at these games and I find them a bit, um, what's the word? Um, they're not my cup of tea really because of what I said. And I'm gonna choose a particularly hard, well, one of the later hard levels to explain um, why I have issues with these kind of games. Um, but of course, some of you will say, I love this type of game. So let's look at what we got here. All right, let's bring up my friend, Mr. Pointer. So. I am here. I have to get here. Now, it is not possible to, to fall down here and climb up here. 
because if I do that, um, uh, well, if I fall down, it's just too high. So I'm obviously going to need this barrel here, push it over there, and climb up. But I can't actually climb on barrels either. That's something when you if you go up to a barrel, you'll just push it. You won't climb on it. So I actually need to be on the barrel and be pushed across to get up there. And all right, so I need to, so first, so the thing is you have to go through that exit on your second life. So your second life will have to be on the barrel, pushed across and gone up there. Your first life has to push the barrel across. Now there is an earlier level that does this. Um, but then they make things a little bit more tricky. Um, I see. Um, because um, they've taken out this chunk on the left here, because you need to get back around. So I am going to pretend I am my first life. Um, Salty Horse says, I like how the end of the level shows an infinite loop and solution that maybe understand the game better, not as time travel, but as dimension hopping. That's interesting. Now, the thing is, uh, I've done this level a few times now, and I've done it under, under um, but doing it under pressure, I already remember, like, I'm going to forget how I did this. <laughs> so, I'm going to just, I'm going to run scared. Let me um, just get to the, yeah. Oh God, I've quit the game, haven't I? Oh dear. Let me bring that back up. See, I have problems sometimes with games. I just want to come back to the menu. And I only saw resume and quit. I couldn't see exit. Exit is actually X on the, button, on the pad, I think. So here's my solution. Um, and it needs to reset, I think. Let's start it again. Right. No, it started in the middle of it, isn't it? Um, yeah, so you actually have to, what I had to do is I actually had to, no, let's go into it. God, it's too impossible to explain just by looking at that. Um, I actually need to push the barrel that's on the other side over and come back down. So I have to get on top of this barrel and I'm waiting and what's going to happen when I come back on my second life, I'm going to push this barrel over there. So I'm waiting for the barrel to be pushed. And then I'm going to creep back up. So then I go up. And I think it's another space. Then I'm going to push that barrel in. See, I'm simulating pushing the barrel in. I think that might be enough steps. Let's go back down. Now, I need to be pushed all the way back. So I'm waiting for that. Now, there's a great thing, you can do fast forward and rewind. Fast forward and put some extra time in here. I get pushed back. And now, I'm going to fall down. Because I want to push my second self over to the other side. So, my second self is going to come back around. And then I'm going to get on top of this. Give me more time. Fast forward a little bit. And then I push myself across. Right. And uh, we'll have to see if that's a solution. So now I'm going to start it again. In my second life, I've gone back in time. Right. So let's fast forward my guy onto there, my first self. Right, now I'll push myself up here. Now, will it, have, I, have I pushed myself far enough? Let me fast forward. We will find out. There we go. That was enough. Okay. So now you can see that bridge is coming. Now, it's kind of important to put yourself back and it does do a good job of making sure it shows you the dots where all the path is. Right, so let's fast forward a bit. I'll come off. Right, now I should be pushed along. Fast forwarding. Let's see what happens. Yes! So, that's what you have to do. And it takes a little bit of thinking to remember to do uh, to, to map those steps together. But what I don't like about it, <laughs> what I don't like about it is the fact that it requires a lot of K 
careful positioning. Now there's some real great help there in terms of the rewind. You can, oh, I got, it, I, I got one step too far over whatever, just rewind a little bit. But there is a sense that if you don't get the barrel in the right place or whatever, uh, quite a lot of times when I finish that level, my original self doesn't end up in their final resting spot where they went back in time and the level can't complete. And um, I was like, ah, oh, I've got to rewind a long time back to fix that. And that's the kind of thing that drives me mad about these these games. As was pointed out in the recent in the comments of the recent article, Sokoban does share a lot with that, that if you get the sequence wrong, uh, the whole thing falls apart. This does mitigate a lot of those timing issues um, that, that bother me. The rewind and the fast forward is, is really precise and that's very good. And you can in, it, put in spaces to edit. Instead of having to wait out 20 seconds, you can fast forward 20 seconds quickly, knowing that you've got plenty of time later on. Uh, I feel like there's another step that could be, I don't know, somehow it could be a little bit easier. Uh, my brain can't quite get on it. Like some. Like you could slow down time, like, oh, I need more time here. Let me pause time. I, I think there was um, uh, that scar said on Twitter uh, uh, that he said to me something like, uh, you could just stop time and move around. Like, I think that's possibly, for, for induction anyway, that would make a difference. For other games where you have time travel, it wouldn't work. Um, one of them was Rose and Time, which I mentioned, because that game's all about um, stealth and timing. And if you have something which disrupts the timing, it won't work. But that's induction, and I know some people really love it. It's very interesting. I'm going to keep on keep on playing with it. Depends where my frustration level is, um, but I'm still uh, amazed that I managed to to do that level in front of a Twitch audience. Right. I think uh, I just want to finish off quickly. Then we're just running over time with Ian McLarty's Dissembler. All right, so let's bring up that. Now, apparently I can hit quit and it just comes out of the game, fantastic. Yes, I am sure. <coughs> so final one is Dissembler, very simple uh, puzzle game from Ian McLarty. So um, Ian McLarty, it came out, um, this came out last Thursday. It's on iOS and Steam. Uh, and it is actually uh, Ian's uh, first commercial release for five years, um, if I'm r r correct. The other one was Boson X, which he did with um, John Kearney. That was in 2013. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still recovering from a call I had two weeks ago. Right, so. Um, Ian uh, creates loads of tiny little games. Uh, one of the most memorable ones recently was Catacombs of Solaris, which is basically um, it will kill your eyes. It's like a 3D exploration game. I'm going to cough again. <coughs> Excuse me, it's probably very loud for the... Um, I hope you don't got your headphones at home listening really, really intently. And that's a kind of... Uh, it will blow your mind because it's, it'll, it's these horrible areas to negotiate with tiny weird stripes everywhere and does your head in. <coughs> but Dissembler is very different uh, kettle of fish. Let me just go back to the start. I haven't finished the game yet. There's no way of quickly going up to the beginning. So it's actually a sort of match three game. Um, and very much, I mean, you can almost say at the beginning, it's like Bejeweled. Um, you're basically, you can flip um, two spaces over, hopefully to put a, put a match together. So I can swap those around and you can see I've made two matches of three. Level ends. Now every time you make a match, uh, every time you flip something, you have to make a match. If you, if you have to make a, a set of three or more. So if I do that, it won't let me make that move because I'm not making any matches here. So I have to do that. Um, there's another one, very simple one. So. Um, that that move will destroy your game. There's no way to, to win from that position. So nice liberal undo, and you can do that. And um, to be honest, I don't find it that hard. There are levels where it does get a little bit tricky, but mostly I find it fairly straightforward to my mind. I don't feel like I'm making strategies so much. Um, I'll show you an example in a minute. Um, but you have to think about moving the colors towards each other. Um, that tends to be 
what you're doing. So I'm moving the blue up there, blue up there, and putting the pink together ready for the last step. Here's another one that's very clear. The purple is scattered out and you want to put it towards the middle. So I'm swapping that over, knocking that out, take that out. Both those go in the end. And um, this one's actually pretty straightforward. You just, it's almost like make, it, it solves itself. That's what it feels like. I don't think you can really screw this up. Um, now this feels, so I do that often. That's always my first move and it just ruins it. It's just obviously the wrong move. You do that. That's how you do it. Not there. There you go. So it's got, um, I think it's 150 levels. Um, you get more and more colors. There is a colorblind option. Um, and um, the concepts get a little bit more wacky later on. It, it, it steps up the kind of things you have to deal with. Let's jump to this one. Now, admittedly, I'm very bad at the circles. I tend to just kind of go swap them around a bit and go, is that right? Is that right? Um, what you have to do is create shapes which have whole circles. So those, those, those spaces will get knocked out now. And that's what you have to do. Say there's a corner piece with all the, all the circles together. This one is fairly simple. There we go. Let's do some of these. And the next one is quite nice and simple. You can see like you just have to get these circle colors matched up like that. And off they'll go. I will show you one more kind of crazy thing. Um, let's go to the first one. So then you get these tiles look like this. And you can see it. That looks like the color is a color behind the square. What happens is, that's exactly what happens, you get another color up here. And um, you've then basically got to do this, those, those tiles twice. But that is not the way you think about it. Honestly, like 90% of the time, you're not thinking, oh, I've got to get rid of that tile again. You tend to think about, oh, I need that color over here because that doesn't work properly otherwise. You tend to think of it as moving the colors around. Um, Greg saying it's got a kind of cami feel where the interactions really click and pop. Yeah, I think it's 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 very um, it's another minimalist game, but I think the effects are just kind of perfect. Now, I do wish I could play this on Android. It's not on Android at the moment. Um, whether it is coming out, I don't know. But it's just the kind of thing I would play very easily on the train. I, I don't tend to sit down at my desktop and play games like these these days. But um, it is out on iOS for those of you with a with an Apple machine. <coughs> oh my gosh, probably deafening you all. And that's December. I don't even say too much about it. I mean, what can you say, really? Um, there's a, there are daily challenges. And there's, of course, there's an infinite mode. And, <coughs> oh my gosh. Um, oh, Salty Horse says it is coming to Android. I'll probably have finished it by then, though, unfortunately. Well, I suppose it's all the infinite mode. Um, but yeah. Uh, thank you, Ian, for giving me the key to this game. And um, yeah, it's it's just a nice, relaxing, easy. I haven't found it too taxing. Um, you do come up with some sort of skills, but I don't find I really need to work too hard at it. Um, uh, I think there are a few more variations to come yet. Um, but yeah, I think that's Dissembler for you, and it's a nice, a nice, nice game. Um, a nice puzzle game. Uh, match three, but uh, slightly different from your average match three. Um, I'm waiting for campfire cooking as well, said Salty Horse. For a moment, Salty Horse, I thought you meant there was a, like a special mode in, in December that was called campfire cooking, but I assume it's another game that I'm not familiar with. Well, that's all the games I want to talk about today. We've run over by 10 minutes, uh, but I knew that December wasn't going to take me too long. Um, but um, yeah, I hope you've had an interesting selection of stuff this week. and. Uh, we'll see what we can do next month. I really would like to do a piece on a game called Licorice, um, which I haven't finished yet. But it needs, it doesn't work properly if I'm using my um, sound card drivers and I have to take off my sound card drivers to get it to work. And it's like, if I do that, may I, will I break my streaming? <laughs> so I um, keep on putting it off. Um, so we'll see uh, uh, what, we, uh, what we get up next month. Well, thank you very much for um, attending, everybody. And uh, I'm... 
gonna gonna leave for now uh, because I'm about to cough lots and lots and lots. Um, but uh, thank you very much, and uh, see you sometime uh, in about thirty days or so. Uh, how do I quit? <laughs>